16 Minutes of Care is a podcast based on the care principles, a strategic framework that reveals how brands create impact by caring and, as a result, grow their business. In each episode, Isabel welcomes a company executive who explains how care has helped their business grow successfully and sustainably. 16 Minutes of Care, the new format of the Care Principles, talks today with Ellen Petit. Ellen Petit is country manager for the Netherlands and for Belgium at the startup Go Student. Go Student is one of the world's leading tutoring providers. And I talked to Ellen already about Care for People. I talked already with Ellen about Care for Planet. And we went into the whole care principles model. We talked about collaboration, agility, reliability, and empathy. But as you tutor uh, youngsters and kids mm -hmm. between six and 19 years old, Ellen, um, I would like to talk a bit more about this target group because they are really the future yes. of the world. And you are helping them to make that future look better and look brighter mm -hmm. and look smarter. And um, I would actually like to start um, my first question about your founder. Mm -hmm. um, I read that um, he's, he, you said it before in the first episode, I think that he's really bright and yes. very, he's a mathematical brain. Mm -hmm. um, but it was actually his grandfather who uh, was really his role model could you explain a bit more about that story? Because I found it a very touching story. It is a very touching story. They have a very close-knit family, and his grandfather has always sort of believed in him, has helped him uh, with his studies, but definitely also with starting up Go Student. Um, and uh, yes, there's been some financial injection, but it's more about, I trust you, I see that you can do this, uh, I see that you have an idea that, that could really work, just go for it. And just uh, uh, the conversations and the support has been uh, incredibly important to him yes mm -hmm. is it important to have a role model in your life um, I personally don't necessarily think a role model but somebody uh, that you can turn to um, so a role model maybe implies a bit that they're not necessarily there in your life it could also be I know uh, that Oprah Winfrey. Uh, for me, I think it's more important to find that close by, more like a mentor than a role model, I think. Okay, okay. And it could be a teacher. Um, I think we all remember uh, our good teachers yes. and we completely forget uh, the bad uh, teachers. Um, I have a daughter of 19 years old and she studies physics mm -hmm. in, uh, at university yeah. now because uh, in high school there was one yes. teacher that lit the little fire yeah. of physics in her and she's so passionate about it. So teachers, they do have a very important role yes. in the lives of kids, yes. no? Absolutely, a thousand percent agreed. A very important role. And um, it's depending on the teacher themselves, but also on the connection with the student, whether that important role will become positive or negative. Mm -hmm. And I don't think there's any teacher out there who sets out to make a negative impact. But just as you know, you come across people in life and you don't sort of get along and you know that, but you are able to just walk away from a situation and think, glad I'm never going to have to speak to that person again. Students cannot do that. Teachers can't do that either. So they're stuck together three, four times a week for an entire school year, if not longer. Um, so uh, the negative impact can become quite detrimental just because there's no really, really escaping it. Mm -hmm. Do you see that, is that one of the reasons why um, parents uh, turn to Go Student to come uh, to make Go Student a solution? Because they see that there is a relationship between a, 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 a teacher and, and a child and that the relationship is sometimes in the way of uh, understanding mathematics better or whatever, a language better? Absolutely, yes, yes. I think quite often if we really drill down, because the reason for, for getting in touch with us is bad grades. But we, again, we need to understand what that is. Um, because sometimes it's also maybe, maybe special needs, or maybe that they are bullied in school, they just don't like going to school, they spent their entire time at school sort of retreating and not paying attention. Or it is indeed that uh, the teacher can explain it in a way that clicks for the student and can't find a way around that, or indeed just not a personal match, that, that's fine. 
Um, so it's not that they call us because of that, but we do quite often see um, that that is one of the reasons why grades are going down, yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A lot of studies uh, prove that uh, children today, they have uh, way more um, issues mm -hmm. than before. Maybe before um, they weren't researched, but things like ADHD, autism spectrum uh, issues. Is that something that you can confirm that you see it when you work with pupils? Um, I mean, I can't confirm whether or not it has, it has gone up because we, you know, re recently Recent, started. Um, we do see that uh, we have some tutors in our pool that we know can cater to it because they might have a, a study, do, they might do a study with that child psychology or something like that. Uh, and parents are very happy that we can cater to that for their, for their children. Um, so yes, it's there. And it's, again, something that the regular school system doesn't necessarily always know how to cater to. And again, let me re-emphasize that that is not, I understand you're a teacher, you're overworked, there's 30 children in, them, in that classroom. It is super hard to individualize your teaching to, to the children. Uh, but that might be what they need. So mm -hmm. we need to sort of start reasoning uh, from the children's point of view, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, is technology like artificial intelligence, is it helping to, to overcome certain barriers that children are having? I, I think it will help uh, implement it in the right way. So, so, you know, AI can be very invasive if, if not used the right way. We have done tests with it. And what we then see is we look at the emotion in children's faces when the teachers are going through their, uh, their um, um, materials. And so we see that math brings out a negative emotion. Um, probably we didn't need to research that, but here we go, it's now founded. Um, and knowing that, you can then change maybe the way you teach it. Um, and you can just you can measure what is making a positive and what is making a negative impact on the emotions of a kid. And we do need to acknowledge that if you feel well, it's easier to learn. Mm -hmm. Totally, totally. Talking about feeling well, um, again, uh, all research indicates that since COVID, um, um, all age groups from young to old are suffering more from anxiety, mm -hmm. from loneliness, from um, all kinds of mental issues. Um, is that something that you also see coming back, working with these uh, younger target groups? I mean, we hear it. Again, I can't confirm whether or not there's an uptick. We did do an educational report that we published uh, end of last year. Yes, November last year. Um, hey. Uh, <laughs> and, and yes, my dog we, is joining us. Uh, just... Lovely. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> um, and, and yes, we, we do see that in, in the report as well. And we think that the one-on-one -on -one contact there is also good. Like, not all lessons are lessons. Sometimes, especially after, you know, the relationship has been established, we know that parents say, oh, they just had a chat. That's also fine. It doesn't always have to be, uh, you know, grades and studies and just having a chat. How are you doing? Somebody external that listens to them that's quite close in age range might just sometimes bring that sort of, I'm burdening for them a little bit. Mm -hmm. Because I guess that's also an important part when your teacher, when you're like, say, you're 14 years old and your teacher is 24 years old, they feel they might feel more connected than when yes. their teacher is 54 years old, let's yes, say. Yes, absolutely. They yeah. feel part, more part of the same generation yes. and, and more confident to tell them things that yeah. they might never say to a teacher true. at school. Yeah, that's true. And, and because, that, because of that connection, uh, they now also ask questions and you know asking questions is, is where you start learning so it sort of all ties in together and that, that, that's also why we do this long-term uh, sort of membership program that we have uh, because that is the key to it and that's also why we think students are the way forward and not necessarily fully qualified teachers which is also a, a bit of a, a shift in mindset for, for parents. That's true. Um, it's, it's really about the connection that is often missed in classrooms because of age gap, because of how big classrooms are, yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Interesting. You're also working with the metaverse. 
How, how does that work at uh, Go Student? Uh, we recently started uh, venturing into it. Uh, we are, uh, there's, a, there's a project team put together to see how we can do that best. So I'm going to have to ask you to stay tuned on that a little bit. Okay. Um, it, it's, all, it's all sort of exciting projects, um, but it's, also, it's lots of pilots for now. Um, and to see, basically to, to uh, encourage interaction and engagement. Mm -hmm. mm. Interesting, but that you're really just at the start of things. Yes, but you'll hear about that soon. Ooh. Yes. Okay, <laughs> teaser. <laughs> Teasy. Um, I would like to go back a little bit to, um, to your tutors, your students. Yes. Like you said, you work, the teachers are students still. They, yes. they are still studying, yeah. so they are not fully... Uh, they, are, they, they didn't get their diplomas nope. yet. They're, um, how do parents trust that? Aren't they afraid then that they, they might not be able to help the, the kids? Some don't trust that. Um, I understand. It's your children that you, uh, that you, that you want to take care of. Uh, we always have trial sessions, so we can at least tell them, okay, just do it once. If you don't like it, that's fine. Uh, and then really, like our, our tutors are such great people. They all do it because they want to do it. I mean, tutoring, it is not enough to be proficient or very good at a certain subject. You really need to enjoy uh, explaining that as well. And it's that combination of the proficiency in the subject and the joy that they have. And we have to, I, I have, this is in, in, in Germany, I believe, a tutor who rewrote Harry Potter in Latin for, the, for her Latin student because she was into Harry Potter and that was what made it click. Oh, wow. I mean, that, yes, Latin just became fun. I would study Latin if it was like that. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yes, parents ask for the qualifications and we have enough experience and trust in our, in our, in our tutors to say uh, it's not necessary. No. How do you do that in Belgium? Because as, as we said in the first episode, mm -hmm. in Belgium it's difficult for uh, students um, to become independent and invoice mm -hmm. because of the tax situation. Mm -hmm. So uh, do Flemish kids get tutored then by Dutch? No, Flemish tutors. We have as many, uh, well, not ah. as many, but we have enough Flemish uh, tutors for uh, Flemish students and Dutch tutors for Dutch students. Actually, uh, my French colleague in France uh, uh, takes care of sort of the French speaking parts so of the Walloon part of Belgium uh, and there it can be much more sort of interchangeable but Flemish and Dutch it's it, we want it to be the same but it's not it's so not no we have Flemish tutors for our Flemish okay, children so absolutely you, oh, okay yes. so so even the when the Flemish parents are listening now to this podcast they don't need to worry no the, they so the no the, no, the cheeky, no cheeky Dutch person no for cheeky their Dutch children person. no <laughs> teaching the kids Dutch instead no. of a Flemish no. okay interesting you're also very transparent on the salary that you pay yep. uh, to tutors. You, um, they get 15 euros a lesson mm -hmm. um, for a lesson that costs average uh, uh, around 25 euros. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, 15 euros for a student, mm -hmm. at least in Belgium, it's a very good salary. Yeah. Is there a, the reason behind this transparency? What is it? It is what it is. We, we, yeah, we don't feel like hiding it. And I, I have opinions on that also just in general recruitment. Like um, we can all... Uh, say that we want to hire people who feel the vision and but if they're not fairly compensated they won't stay long no matter how well of a cultural fit they are and I think it's a bit boomer to say if it's only for the money then it's not okay that's not true people need to earn a living especially now when things are getting crazily expensive so yeah. it is what it is totally but it's all about I believe as a company people planet profit it needs to be in balance yes. and many companies always put it the profit if, before the planet and before people and I think we evolve towards a different society yeah. and a different business model where it has to be more balanced healthy balances healthy yes balances. so we're a commercial company so that's yes. absolutely you have part to grow, of the equation you have to make money yeah. but not at the cost uh, of people no. or planet it's absolutely not okay. necessary it was really nice talking to you. Likewise. I have one final question for you, Ellen, and then we really have to, uh, to stop um, okay. uh, this episode. Your founder, Felix, uh, uh, said, I want to dream big and leave the world um, a better place than we found it. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Thomas is, it? Oh, no, Felix is. Felix, Felix yeah. yes, it's one of his quotes. Um, how would you say we can all dream big and leave the world in a better place? Do you have any tips or... or last things you can share with us that we can all do? 
I think that it's it's very important to keep to if in order to achieve big things you have to keep the first step small and I think that it's about kindness. If we employ kindness in, in looking at each other, if you employ kindness in the things we say, kindness multiplies in the person and then spreads out again. And if we start being kinder to each other, I think, I hope we will start uh, reasoning from and making decisions based on abundance and not on scarcity. And I think that will bring us to bigger, better things. Great. It was a great way to end this episode. Lovely. Thank you so much, Ellen, for Thank being you. here. Thank you at home to watch and to listen this uh, episode. Kindness and taking care of each other. That's what we really need to do a little bit better day by day, step by step, action by action. Thank you for watching. Please share this episode. Please talk about the care principles. Please review it. Give it all the uh, stars it deserves and hold on to yourselves. Thank you very much and take care. Want to create lasting impact with your brand while feeding sustainable growth? Check out thecareprinciples.com and see how we can help you. 16 Minutes of Care is an independent production from Isabel Verstraten, brand strategist, founder of The Care Principles and author of the book, Does Your Brand Care? Help us reach more companies who are looking for caring and sustainable growth by giving this podcast all the stars it deserves and by sharing it in your network. Thank you and take care.